I carry a 45 because they don't make a 46. Two world wars. Don't appendix carry. You'll blow your nuts off. Three yards, three shots, three seconds. All these things have something in common. There's some futtery coming up. Don't worry. This won't take long. Let's get to work. Hey guys, work here. Welcome back to Work the Trigger. Today, we're going to be talking about the threes. What do I mean? The old trope of gunfights lasting three seconds three shots, and within three yards, and how people tend to work their carry ideology around that, and worse yet, influence others' carry ideologies with that same dumb crap. Now, I'm not even going to get into the studies where this information came from. We all know that with studies with these, there are a lot of errors, so we're, we're not, we're not going to touch on that part. What I am going to get into are two different things. One is designing your carry ideology over this and two is trying to influence others' carry ideologies over the same thing. So why is this bad per se? So there, there's three parts to this ideology and all the parts are pretty equally dumb, especially when using it as a reason to influence the things that we carry or the way that we carry. So first up, let's go with the three shots. So in this saying, most gunfights last three shots or less. And again, statistically, it doesn't matter if that's true or not. The most part or even the average part, all of that means that there are some that take more than three shots. So aligning your ideology, these people would almost be comfortable carrying a two shot Derringer. That's how stupid this is. We know that that's a dumb round count for a primary gun. Nobody advocates using that as a primary firearm. So why would we advocate one more shot than that? It's dumb. Again, this is an average. It's immediate. It's 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 the middle, which means that there are equal portions more and less. And telling somebody that it's not important to carry more than three rounds or five rounds or eight rounds because of that is kind of irresponsible. Because again, it, it's painting a false picture that they all end within three rounds. And quite honestly, even if they did all end within three rounds. I wouldn't be comfortable with carrying just three rounds. The last thing you want to do when showing up to an unexpected gunfight is being the less prepared of the two people. Now you see this argument made a lot when you're talking about the new slim pistols, compacts, subcompacts, full size, all of that stuff, and especially when you get down into like uh, carrying anything over a Ruger LCP or a 1911. The majority of the people who kind of keep up to date with things say carry as many bullets as you possibly can while also being comfortable and promoting you to carry it. If you prescribe to this old way and you get the short straw, and you're in one of those gunfights that takes more than three rounds, yes, I know that you probably have three rounds. But if you've only trained for those three rounds, what's to get you out of that training crutch? What, what's to pull you out of that? Because we know that at very best, you fight like you train. At worst, you're going to regress drastically. So even if you've tried those every once in a while, your proficiency is going to be down. And if you just practice Mozambique after Mozambique, you're not going to know where to put those shots after those first three are done. The instance of encounters with multiple intruders lately is drastically growing. I can show you 10 videos from the internet just in the last couple of months with multiple intruders or multiple assailants where three rounds would not be enough. You're going to want as many as you can carry. And that's why you shouldn't really listen to them in that case. Next up, let's go with the three yards portion. Now, this one typically comes up when you're talking about aiming, whether it's aftermarket sights, practicing, or my favorite, red dots. Both this and the next one do happen to deal with a lot of those, but, but here's where the three yard one really gets me. Uh, the majority of the time, these guys greatly push just point shooting. Point shooting is good enough, yada yada. And again, three yards, even if the statistic is true, that's the middle. That means there's a bunch more and a bunch less. So what are you gonna do when you've gotta take that 21 yard shot and you've only practiced point shooting at three yards or you've got a Ruger LCP with non-existent sights or your Glock sights fell off because you never bothered replacing the plastic ones. There's an exception to every rule, especially dumb ones like this. I will always tell people, be as proficient as possible with whatever you're carrying. So if any little modification helps you in that proficiency, do it. There's no such thing as a fair gunfight. You want more ammo, better aiming, as much time as you can get. To reduce yourself to less than that is, again, irresponsible. And to reduce other people to that based on your dumbass thoughts is downright criminal. Look at the shooting in the Texas church just a couple of years ago. Dude made, what, a 15-yard headshot? You think he did that by point shooting? You think he did that by reserving himself to think that he was only ever going to shoot three yards? No. 
No, he didn't. He went out there and he trained for shots just like that. What's going to happen if it's one of your family members held at 15 or 20 yards and you've got to take that 20 yard shot and you haven't practiced it because, oh, three yards or less. And the last part of this, the three seconds or less, this is where we get into sights too and that point shooting. You see a lot of why do you bother upgrading your sights? Why do you bother upgrading to a red dot? Because you're not going to have time to use your sights. And again, even if the three seconds is a true statistic, it is a median, it's a middle ground. There's more, there's less. You can't take that one number as Bible and design your entire carry procedure and all of the advice that you give around that dumb amount of time. To ignore the basic fundamentals of shooting for these three threes might just get you or somebody that you love killed. And it's even worse if you're the dude giving advice based on this stuff. So consider this for a second. Statistically speaking, you're gonna be much less likely to get into a gunfight at all than if you were in a gunfight having to take a 20 yard shot. So the odds of you after drawing your gun, having to take that 15 or 20 yard shot are astronomically higher than your odds of ever having to have drawn your gun in the first place. The odds of you needing more rounds also falls in that same ballpark. And time, well, that's what you make of it in the time that you've got. Trust me, in three seconds, I can look at my sights. As gun owners, we already prepare for the improbable. We plan and we practice and we prep ourselves for these things that will probably never happen and we pray to God they don't. But if they do, why would you ever resign yourself or worse, suggest somebody else resigns themselves to being underprepared. Now, I'm not a tactical Timmy out here telling you to go to five classes a year to get super proficient, shoot thousands of rounds. I'll no, I understand that that is optimal. I understand that that is what gun guys feel like people should do. I also know that that's not realistic, but trying to carry those extra four to five rounds, making sure that you're proficient with using your sights and the time that you have, making sure that your draw stroke is actually applicable for your carry and what you're doing. All of those things are not things that should be ignored because you don't feel like you would probably have the opportunity to utilize them. So to those of you out there who are looking into carrying a firearm, I would highly suggest that you look at the landscape of what might happen and prepare thusly. And for those of you out there who like to quote the three threes, get your heads out your ass. Thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. I hope this video was useful or at least helped shine some light on a major problem that I see oftentimes in the comment sections of my own videos. If you did find this useful, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. I don't get on here and just talk quite that often. If you guys like this kind of video, do me a favor and let me know in the comments below. If you guys have some other insight on the three threes, do me a favor and write those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Remember guys, I appreciate every one of you. And until next time, do your research, get informed and get to work. Yeah.